in the first part of this tutorial, we learned how to create a GitHub action that automatically backs up our database in whatever period of time we desire. It could be each day at midnight or every three hours if we wanted it to. That GitHub action committed the backup files to our repository. Click on the banner on top of the screen if you didn't watch that video or click the link in the description. In this part, we will learn how to restore our database using these three files if an accident happens. All right. Let's talk about the flip side, restoring a database when something goes wrong, whether it's corrupted data or a bad migration. Here's how to bring everything back like nothing happened. The Supabase CLI is the tool we'll use to restore the database. For macOS, you can install it using brew install supabase slash tap and supabase. For Windows, the official documentation recommends using Scoop, which is a command line installer for Windows. Similar to what Brew is for macOS, you can go to the URL scoop.sh and install it using two commands in your PowerShell terminal. Once Scoop is installed, we can use Scoop Bucket Add Supabase, as shown here on the screen, to let Scoop know where it can find Supabase, and then we can use Scoop Install Supabase to finally install it on our system. In order to be able to restore the database using our .sql backup files, we need to install the PSQL command line tool as well. On macOS, you can use Homebrew to install PostgreSQL, which includes PSQL. Type in brew install PostgreSQL. On Windows, we can use Scoop to install PSQL, just like we did with Supabase CLI. Type in Scoop install PostgreSQL. Now we have installed all the tools we need for database restoration. In order to restore our database, we need the connection string for our Supabase database. GitHub has made a weird decision to not let you see the values of a secret after you set it. So you have to keep it handy in a secure place. In a real world production situation, you can't predict when and where an accident is going to happen to your database and you will need to restore it. So try and keep it accessible, but safe. Finally, the last thing we need to have is our roles.sql, schema.sql, and data.sql files from the backup workflow. We can just clone our repository at the commit we want to restore. Now let's simulate a situation where you want to restore a backup. After you clone the repository that includes the backup files and navigate to the folder where your backup files are stored. In our examples, they live in a folder called Prisma backups. Before restoring the backup files, we need to reset the database. The commands we're going to use do not overwrite the database. They just load whatever is on those files onto the database. Type in this command that uses the Supabase CLI to reset the database and basically wipe it clean. First, we'll restore the roles to ensure all user permissions are intact. Run this command, replacing Supabase DB URL with your database connection string. This command tells the Supabase CLI to execute the SQL statements in roles.sql on your database. It's like rewiring the access controls to match your backup. Next, we'll restore the database structure. This brings back all your tables, indexes, and other structural elements. Run this command. Think of this as rebuilding the skeleton of your database. There's no data yet, but the structure is back in place. Finally, let's breathe life into your database by restoring the data. Use this command. This step repopulates your tables with the data from your backup. You're now officially back in business. Head back to your Supabase dashboard and check your database. You should see your roles, schema, and data fully restored. Test a few queries to confirm everything is working as expected. And that's it. You've restored your Supabase database like a pro. So there you have it, automated daily Supabase backups and a simple professional way to restore your database when needed. You can increase the frequency of the backups using the cron definition to once every three hours or so, but keep in mind that a free GitHub account includes 2000 minutes of action runtime per month, which equates to about 33 hours. You will most likely never hit this threshold, but just keep that mind. Whether you're running a hobby project or a production app, this setup keeps you covered. If you found this helpful, drop a like, maybe subscribe for more no-nonsense tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one.